Hello everybody. Uh, in this video I'm going to be providing a little bit of supplementary instruction for this week to help out with assignment 6. I'm going to be going over, well, I'm going to be going over syntax trees, but then um, specifically uh, yes and no questions. All right, so let's just jump into it. Um, I've prepared a sentence here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start just by my drawing my regular syntax tree. Um, we have these students will understand syntax, a very optimistic projection. And um, what I'm going to be doing is creating this into a yes or no question. So if you can, well, if you look at the sentence for a second, the yes or no question version of this would be, will these students understand syntax, which is really the, the question of the day. All right, so let's just quickly do this. Um, I'm just assuming that at this, oh, by the time you finished your seminar this week, you should be comfortable uh, making these trees. All right, so we, we know that um, will is, although it is an, a modal auxiliary, uh, we are marking it as, a, uh, as T, which means tense. That verb for understand and syntax is a noun. All right, so just a couple things. Um, I'm just going to do the easiest things first. So I know that this noun, this lone noun over here, wants to be part of a, something bigger. So it wants to be part of a noun phrase. And just like this determiner and noun over here want to be part of a bigger noun phrase. All right. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in my seminar today, but one of the reasons that we do think about these things as one unit is the idea that they can be substituted in for a pronoun. Um, so these students can be replaced by they. So we conceive of these students as being one unit, the same way as students would be uh, without these. Um, it's still going to be a phrase on its own because it can re be replaced by something. I don't think I mentioned that this week. Anyway, let's get over here. Um, we're just going to make a quick verb phrase um, out of these two parts. So a noun phrase can act as a complement for a verb phrase. So this works really nicely. And then I've got my T. So I want to make these all part of one tense phrase or a sentence. So I'm going to join my NP up here. And I want to join this to the VP, but I have to remember that I always have this T bar up here that is going to act as a place where the VP and the tense marker can attach to. All right, so there we go. That's my, my tree is all finished. So now what we have to do is decide, it was to figure out what to do with this modal auxiliary. All right, so I'm going to go over to my other one here. So I have this already, my, <laughs> my cooking show style. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is, well, I have to move Will. But in order to move will, I have to have a place for it to attach on to. So that's going to, I have to create that first. So what I'm going to do is above the TP here, I'm going to create something called a CP. And CP stands for complementizer phrase. And the reason it's called that maybe isn't, isn't, isn't important just at the moment. Uh, just know that this is what we're going to be attaching uh, will onto. All right, so this, this CP... Again, it's it's a binary branching, just like everything else. So we're going to connect the TP, and we're going to connect it to, well, it wouldn't be a complementizer phrase without a complement, or complementizer, sorry. Um, that's going to be, be C. And then from C, what we're going to do, well, we can draw a line down here. And now we have a place where will can attach onto. That's at the beginning of the sentence. And it's syntactically valid. So I'm going to I'm going to remove will here and I'm going to add it in up here. Okay, so now this is great. I have will these students understand syntax. But now I have this branch here that really isn't doing anything. It's a branch with nothing on it. So what I want to do is I want to indicate that there was something here. And I'm going to do that with a small, sorry, lowercase t. So this lowercase t um, stands for trace. So this just means there was something here, and it's been removed, and it's, and it's been put up here. So actually, one other thing you can do, this is going to turn out very messy, but there you, go. you can just, you can draw a nice, nice line 
up here like that, uh, just indicating that what is traced here is will, right? And really, that's that's about it. Um, one thing that it does mention in the book, um, if you have a, a question, well, let's let's actually do something do something slightly different. So that's that. Uh, just one more thing I want to add. So let's imagine that you know we we <laughs> let's imagine that you're you're saying the sentence with with intonation like these students will understand syntax. So through, through that intonation, I've basically made this statement into a question. So how would we mark that syntactically? Well, one thing that it seems to suggest in the book is that I would add a complementizer phrase here and a complement here and join these up like so. Get rid of that. And just like we did with um, plus, uh, plus past and minus past, we're going to add a plus q. Oh, that's not q. Plus q. And this just this is indicating um, that this entire sentence is actually a question and not a statement. And if we wanted to, well, rather redundantly mark this sentence as a statement, we would say minus q. All right. So this is this is just the way to indicate whether it's a question or not. If you're not including that. Um, that tense marker at the front. All right, um, but for the purposes of your homework uh, for assignment five, uh, this is exactly what we're looking for. Um, yeah, so hopefully you can apply that to the assignment. All right, that's it for, for this. So I've just gone over yes or no questions. Um, I'm going to make another video that's going over WH questions. Thanks for watching.